Okay. So um, uh, it's good if you keep your videos off. Okay. And uh, it's nice to come, you know, prepared for your class so that even your mind is prepared to learn what is going to in the class. Okay, let's go to our slides. Okay. Uh, Mohammed Jirde, where is he? Ask Mohammed Jirde to join back. Okay. Who is AM? Can you tell me your name? We have uh, Mohammed Jirde, Mohammed uh, Abdirahman. Yeah, let me just put my name. Yeah, yeah, please. Because uh, that will help me for attendance. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's giving me some trouble. Oh, we don't want to waste time. Yes, like that. You are not hearing. I think you are muted. Please, if you are presenting, you're muted, Professor. Okay. Okay. Now you can hear me, right? Thank you. Okay. Well, so I spoke so many things. Well, the first thing is please call Mama Jirde back. It's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, the second thing is um, I was talking about the, the elements, the five you know, keywords that I gave you that will help you to build the answer for project evaluation, vision, or even monitoring, in fact, project, uh, what I was talking, project vision, project provision. Third one was, what did I say? The third one is? Effective. Strategize. Okay. Yeah. yeah, effective. No problem. Then strategize or strategy. The fourth one is maximization of outcomes. And the fifth one, the phrase or the keywords I was giving you was systematic gathering of information. Systematic gathering of information. Now, project evaluation concerns itself with systematic gathering of information about the project activities, the implementation process, the outcomes of such implementation, vis-a-vis, -vis, the purpose, 
and the timeline of the project as a touchstone, as a touchstone. That means it is like a parameter against which they will you know, check or evaluate. So in the evaluation process, there may be one or several variations. Okay, there can be variations, uh, changes. They can be to that extent variation agreements that are signed, okay? Variations, in brackets, you can say there are variation agreements that may be signed, depending upon what is the variation. Limitations and impediments, that is hurdles, obstacles, impediments that may come to the fore. So based on the assessment, premeditated report suggestions, it may be advised to be incorporated for use by the project team to help reduce the recurrence or re recurrence means stop the, the repetition. It shouldn't repeat the recurrence of probable uncertainties, improve effectiveness and empower the team for ad lib decision making. What's ad lib? Ad lib means, you know, extemporaneous. Extemporaneous means at the spur, just at the moment, you know, just when something hits, you know, yeah, what should I do? Next, you know, swift decision making, ad lib decision making, extemporaneous decision making, uh, you know, at the spur of the moment. So all these things are, you know, uh, I mean, that is the purpose that evaluation is conducted. And the questions that may arise is, of course, it can be quantitative and qualitative, just like how even in monitoring it was qualitative, quantitative, likewise, even in evaluation questions may be quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative, as you understand, it is something that, you know, it, uh, you know, it is related to numericals, numbers, statistics, qualitative, something that is related to, uh, you know, theory, basically, theory and, you know, kind of triatize or uh, reports that are just mostly uh, in words. So evaluation questions can be quantitative questions or qualitative questions. So using the right approach the, in the right direction is the key to effective project evaluation. So therefore I would say that using the right approach in the right direction is the key to effective project evaluation. Why? Project evaluation is, you know, a significant task. You know, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, you know, if you read in different management books, it's, they say that, okay, uh, project evaluation is something, you know, a novel idea, and it came into the world somewhere, somewhere way back in 1960s, and somewhere it started in, you know, different parts of the world. Of course, USA is always on the fore of all these things. They said, okay, it started in USA somewhere in 1960s and so on. But however, I would say that evaluation is actually age old theory. It is existing from time immemorial, but evaluation was always there, but just they did not give the word evaluation to it. So now coming back to this, using the right approach in the right direction is the key to the effective project evaluation. So there are several approaches designed that may be assertively and positively used depending upon the type of the project and the parameters within which evaluation needs to be addressed. The first type or the approaches, the first approach is participatory evaluation. The moment you hear the word participatory evaluation, I just want you to remember investors, stakeholders, interested beneficiaries, interested beneficiaries or intended beneficiaries, participatory. So in participatory evaluation approach, stakeholders, intended beneficiaries and investors are included in conducting the evaluation process and in arriving at decisions. That's participatory evaluation approach. Now, as per pattern in 2008, the basic features, he says, of evaluation approach is uh, are as follows. He says, one is the focus is on the participant. One minute. Okay. The focus is on the participant ownership. The evaluation is oriented to the needs of the program stakeholders rather than the funding agency. Next is participants meet to communicate and negotiate to reach a consensus. What is consensus is meeting of minds. 
meeting of minds to reach a consensus, one agreement on evaluation results, solve problems and make plans to improve the pro program. So input is also sought and recognized by all the participants. This is as per pattern. And he says that the emphasis in participatory approach is on identifying lessons learned to help improve program implementation and determine whether targets are met. The evaluation design is flexible and determined to the extent possible during the group processes. Next, the evaluation is based on empirical data to determine what happened and why. And the stakeholders may conduct the evaluation with an outside expert, outside expert serving as a facilitator. So the significance, this is significance as given by Patton in 2008. Next is progressive evaluation or develop, developmental evaluation. As the name suggests, progressive or developmental, it is, it is designed to examine the ongoing pro progress or advancement of the project and to track the achievement of a milestone of a milestone in the project through iterative, entrenched, in-depth root evaluation, in-depth root evaluation and discrepancy that is, uh, you know, the differences. Discrepancy is the differences, something which is different from what was actually planned or something that is already reported. And then they see, uh, practically they see what is actually reported is not really palpably seen or it, it's not, it is not really manifested. So discrepancy, differences, variation or unplanned outcome will be examined to the root study the causation. Causation is cause effect theory and draw inferences or conclusions with recommendations. Next is contributive analysis is an impact-based evaluation approach that iteratively atlases or maps around or maps around or atlases accessible evidence compares it to the advocated theory that may that may be relevant to the project then identify and resolve those challenges next is appreciative inquiry so an appreciative inquiry approach is a strength-based approach borrowed from the concept of organizational development that is designed to evaluate the progress of the ongoing project by identifying and probing extraneous, that is external instances of good practice that adopted inside the project and you observe the impact. That is, you appreciate the best parts, the best practices are even used outside. You integrate it in your system, you adopt it in your project evaluation, and then you check the impact. That is appreciative inquiry. Next is beneficiary assessment. Now, beneficiary assessment, of course, the interested parties, the interested beneficiaries who are there. So what is in their mind, their ideas, whether uh, they, you take their advice, their input, and you see whether, uh, you know, it is basically, you know, beneficiary-centric uh, approach. It is normally it revolves around the beneficiary, the needs, the advice, the input, and everything, then you make a report, assessment report, and you report it back to them. And then whatever they say is back incorporated and so on. And it is, you know, used for project evaluation and even in the project. So that is beneficial. What, what the beneficiary says, whether it is stakeholders or it is uh, investors, whether it is the, any interested party or whatever, whether it is a beneficiary structure, like say it can be an airport, seaport, whatever, whatever is a project. Next is qualitative impact, impact assessment protocol, QUIP. Qualitative impact assessment protocol, QUIP. It's also a form of you know, beneficiary assessment. Next is case study. A case study approach is a research design that emphasizes primarily ascertaining and understanding the needs of the project. The project as it is, its purpose in its content context, and then appropriate or utilize or apply it to quantitative and qualitative data to arrive at inferences such an approach is normally suitable for research-based projects and philanthropic projects. Next is democratic evaluation. Democratic evaluation, you know, it normally utilizes, uh, you know, democratic solicitation of ideas, decision-making and accountability. 
Next is empowerment evaluation. Empowerment evaluation is a form of participatory evaluation that empowers the team with knowledge of self-evaluation techniques that measures their own performance to enhance individual and or group productivity towards achieving project success and effective delivery. Now, this empowerment is normally, if you, you, you could have, you know, it's normally borrowed from organizational development, you know, empowerment evaluation. It believes in empowering uh, the team with the knowledge of even self-evaluation technique that measures their own performance to enhance what individual or group productivity towards what finally achieving project success, keeping in mind or bearing in mind project vision and that would lead to effective delivery. Next is developmental evaluation. What is developmental evaluation? This is an important question for your exams, okay? This is an important question that you can expect it to come for your exam. Whatever I have, uh, you know, discussed today, especially approaches and introduction I gave you, I gave you keywords, vision, provision. So these kind of, and I, I would normally expect you to write this in the answer and your, uh, just to because it came in my mind now, uh, your question paper pattern would be 20 marks. You know, each question would be for 20 marks, and of course, a short note or something would be for around five marks. You were expected to write elaboratedly. Okay, so this is an important question again. Evaluation approaches. Evaluation approaches. Okay, next, let's move on to institutional histories. Um, Chronicle, that is how it has developed evolution, chronicle institutional activities and evaluate evolution of such not evaluation, evolution, the progress of such descriptions are examined and studied of how they have evolved over time that has impacted successful project deliveries. Next is outsource harvesting. Outsource harvesting is a retrospective approach that collects data on a differential of improvement and challenges and identifies the intervening solutions that have proven successful in mitigating risks and losses in previous project. Again, outcomes, uh, outcome, uh, you know, mapping, outcome mapping or accuracy is an evaluation approach that permits credible assessment of transformative initiatives, which effect, which effected a positive impact on change that has contributed to successful project results. Next is summative uh, evaluation, a holistic evaluation or overall evaluation that's normally conducted after the completion of the project. Uh, and that we study the overall impact project outcomes vis-a-vis -vis the project goals and purposes. Next is formative evaluation. A formative evaluation is normally adopted during the, uh, you know, execution or implementation of the project or even at the beginning of the project, examining the pitfalls, the probable limitations, and, you know, offering resolutions based on periodical evaluation reports during the, pro the project life cycle. Next is realist evaluation approach. Now, this approach is basically a theory-driven approach that begins with a theory pertaining to the project, and it culminates in the fine-tuning or refining of the same, as was proposed by Pawson and Nick Tiley in 1997. So it is actually distinct or different from conventional evaluation, traditional evaluations, which concerns itself or themselves with the workability of a program or the factors involved in the project. I like this part. However, realistic evaluation aims to answer the question what works for whom in what circumstances and in what respect and how you see here realistic that is practical pragmatic evaluation realistic that it's not the, the matter of uh, like you know it's some question about the workability of a program or a project or the factors that are involved in the project however as tiley we quote tiley here in 2004 tiley is uh, said to have remarked that realistic or realist evaluation aims to answer the question what works for whom, in what circumstances, and in what respect, and how. Just a moment. Um, Oh, uh, it's recorded. Okay, sorry. Okay. 
Uh, next is, now broadly speaking, monitoring and evaluation has three approaches. Okay, now this is just, you know, a, a, you know, a broad categorization, okay, of, you know, including monitoring and evaluation. They just have three approaches. It's a result-oriented monitoring and evaluation approach that examines the, the outcomes or which aims at, you know, examining the maximization of outcome, the results, ways of we the project goals, the project vision, and draws an inference on how effectively the project has been successfully launched and notes the extent of achievement of project goals. Next is constructivist approach, which engages people interaction and negotiation. It's constructive in nature. It, it is normally people-centric. It takes into consideration people's interaction. Basically, constructive approach is an interactive approach. I'm repeating, constructive approach is an interactive approach. And this, you know, it advocates a collective learning process, eliciting or asking for information and ideas from people who are part of the project. Next is reflex approach, which goes much further than the constructive approach. This approach not only advocates an interactive learning process and exchange of idea, but also examines the impact of learning outcomes reflected in the project and adds to the positive development of the project. Uh, next is we move on to the analysis of monitoring and evaluation of data, which, which is a short lesson. Um, I want you to just stay with me for some time longer, maximum say around for some more time, maybe around 15, 20 minutes, uh, if you can, so that we would complete the syllabus on time and you would have time for uh, you know revision because there is high possibility that you, you might just receive you know, the timetable or probably you all received from the university or you're going to receive it. So I just don't want, want you to, you know, uh, to just prolong all the lectures uh, to, you know, at my convenience and at your convenience and then who suffers is you. So I want to finish it on time so that you have ample time to, uh, you know, revise the lessons. So please bear with me for some more time so that instead of taking forward it to the other two weeks, we can complete it on time and the other week we can have time for, you know, some revision if you want or, you know, if you want me to explain something again or just, just tell you important questions or probably just give you time off to study, to really study during that one hour or one and a half hour, two hours, whatever. Okay, so if with your permission, I just like to go on again, bear with me for some more time. So analysis of monitoring and evaluation data and, and the analysis. Now here, see, uh, there are ways of analyzing the, the data which is collected. Of course, you have the quantitative technique as well as a qualitative technique. Now here we'll confine ourselves just to the, you know, the approaches or rather I use the word, the, the methods of analysis rather than teaching you exactly how it is, how does it work really? So I would just tell you in this analysis chapter of how it is done, uh, or, or rather, uh, sorry, what is done rather than really how it is done, okay? So I'd confine my lecture to that. So the data that is collected in the process of monitoring and evaluation will be cleaned. Of course, the first stage is when you collect data, you, you collect ample information. So out of that, you really, uh, you know, they call it as data cleaning. So you would really uh, try to cut out all irrelevant data. Are you understanding me? You cut out irrelevant data, unwanted data, erroneous data, incomplete data, then the cleaned data, whatever data is, you know, uh, you know, the relevant data is set aside, is kept, kept within, uh, kept for them and is filed. And later on, this cleaned data, refined data, is next subjected to analysis and interpretation. It's just obvious when you collect data, you collect a lot of information. So out of all the information, you just extract the, the relevant information and set aside all the irrelevant part of it. And then what is relevant, you analyze and you interpret it. Now, why is data collected and analyzed? Why is data collected analyzed? So analysis aids in drawing conclusions, inferences, and finding impediments that need swift redressal 
or uprooting or cementing or alternative route planning as an effort to not impede the progress, obstruct the progress of the project. So that's the reason you analyze it. So analysis of monitoring and evaluation data, it aids in verifying whether the project goals are achieved, project targets are achieved, and drawing conclusions and effectiveness of project completion and delivery. So in the pursuit of project processes or stages of implementation is also analyzed. So in the, in the pursuit of project you know, evaluation, in this pursuit, it's not the, it's in this pursuit of project evaluation, comma, project processes or stages of implementation is also analyzed, along with examining the milestone achievement markers. So process and analysis are mostly presented as graphic design models or as flow charts, pivot tables, and then the inference is drawn. So, you know, how is it actually represented? Normally they use graphic design models, flow charts, pivot tables, pie charts, and so on. And based on that, again, inferences or conclusions are drawn. So monitoring and evaluation analysis involves the analysis of one, quantitative and qualitative data. Quant qualitative data are not coded and they are not expressed numerically in numbers, that is, but on the contrary, they involve a transcript or descriptive narration of even, uh, and it may even include a case study, logical analysis, matrix, etc. So a popular software in this area that's available to analyze qualitative data is ethnography, Hypersoft, Atlas slash TI, T, which is currently popular for what? For assessing qualitative data. Next is quantitative data includes numerical and figures as the name itself suggests quantitative data. So facts are represented numerically also with the help of statistics cross tabulations cross tabulation is an interesting uh, form of uh, really you know uh, you know representing a data so that you could really you know, refer the you know at least four or five tables all together in one and you could really check the you know the developments and then accordingly draw inferences so cross tabulations is a very good uh, form of uh, you know uh, representing the facts or representative uh, representing uh, you know quantitative data charts are also used here pivot tables pie charts are used as well so quantified data can use descriptive analysis quantified i'm talking about quantified data as the name suggests can also use descriptive analysis in statistics and can explain using statistics the frequencies conclusive counts averages and percentages now, further inferential statistics are also used to draw conclusions and extract extrapolations are proposed that is with regards to the implementation of the project. So these inferences that are drawn are compared to the original charter, the original plan, the project plan, and or the project or program goals that were planned to be achieved. So this is a straightforward method to decipher or to conclude or to understand whether the project is implemented as planned. So the indicator is reference now here how it is done is there is an indicator or uh, whatever is the particular the in indicator is a reference to the actual performance so i want you to you know visualize a, a table before your eyes there is a table that is you know the first column deals with indicator or you know it is the a particular which you seek to actually you know evaluate then there is the actual performance which is there then there is or like what is happening or the status of the project and then that is compared to the target or a standard performance so now you will note the difference the deviation the deviation like whether how close you have matched the 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 original plan the original target or the standard performance how close you have matched or what is the discrepancy there what is the the the, the level of deviation in if any with a note on corrective action you might put a note there in the last column on corrective action i'm repeating okay i'm just repeating this again for you i want you to imagine a table the first column it has indicator indicator or particulars that that is what exactly you want to evaluate the next column you would you would mention the the, the performance the actual performance 
as against an indicator what you're actually, uh, you know, what you have identified and what you're actually evaluating. Like what is the actual performance? The third column would be the target or the standard performance. The fourth column would be any deviation which is there. You would really study, you would evaluate the actual performance vis-a-vis -vis the, the standard performance or the target performance and see if everything is matched 100 on 100, wow, it's good. So you would say that no deviation or deviation zero. I'm understanding me. But in case there is a deviation, you would put it possibly in a percentage form, say a 2% deviation or, you know, 10% deviation, 25%. Oh, 25% is, you know, a, a really, uh, you know, a percentage that we need to be concerned about. You know, 25%, 50% deviation. Oh, that's again a percentage that you need to be concerned about. So now there in the last column, you would put, uh, you can draw the column in your notebooks. The last column, you could, uh, you know, write, uh, a note for corrective action on how to, you know, cement this uh, this discrepancy there, and how best in the next, uh, you know, the next plan of action, you know, the POA that you would really devise or a CA, the corrective action that you would devise, you say how best you would cement this, uh, you know, this discrepancy, and you would move further, and that you you would advise it in that table, and then you measure the deviation differences in percentage. So next is project monitoring and evaluation software, maybe easily used to analyze it. So all this work of monitoring and evaluation in case of this, uh, the, the analysis part of the, the, to analyze the data, there are various softwares that are available and uh, they can be used. Like for example, I told you that in, um, you know, for, um, uh, what's that? For, quanti for qualitative data, the software that is normally used is Ethnography, Hypersoft, Atlas, Sustai, which is actually this last one, the Atlas Sustai is currently popular. Now for you know, statistical, there is for even qualitative, uh, for quantitative data also, there are different softwares that are available. And the last part that I would like to discuss in this, you know, for this class, or rather I would like to mention is, Statistical package for social sciences, SPSS, is also the most popular quantitative analysis software normally used in social research projects. So this is an example of a software that is used for social, reject, uh, social research projects um, and its most popular quantitative analysis used for quantitative analysis. So with that, we finish the analysis part of it. I will send you the notes and uh, I want you to do an additional reference and then, uh, you know, add some points to whatever I'm giving you or, you know, and uh, if you want to really articulate the, whatever we have discussed the lecture, you can really express it with your, you know, you can write it down whatever is not there in the slide or whatever is not there in the notes and then you can you know uh, write your examination so get ready for your exams and uh, we'll try to finish our syllabus as fast as possible i'm trying to do it for the next class where we can prolong a lecture for maybe two hours okay so that you are ready for it so we have finished up to chapter six and just go by the the you know the topics that I have given you and what are there in my notes. So that is the syllabus for your exam, okay? So next class we will do chapter seven and chapter eight. We go towards the conclusion in chapter eight. Okay, so that's all for the today's class. Oh. Give me attendance. Abdullahi Muhammad Ado, Muhammad Bashir Abdullahi. Who's iPhone now? Who's iPhone? Yes, me, Amina Ahmed. Ah, yeah. Amina Ahmed. Amina, okay, Amina. I remember now. Amina Muhammad. Ahmed. So the attendance for today's. Not, not Muhammad. Ahmed. Yeah. Ahmed. Okay. Amina Ahmed. Yes. Okay. A Amina Ahmed. Okay. So, uh, so your attendance is iPhone Amina Ahmed, Abdullahi Muhammad Ado, 
Muhammad Bashir Abdullahi. And uh, there was even this uh, Muhammad Abdirahman, I guess. I'll grant them attendance. And even Muhammad Jirde. Muhammad Jirde. Okay. Oh, so it's Muhammad Jirde. Okay, fine. Yeah, he lost he lost the connection. And yeah, he lost the connection. So Muhammad Jirde, Muhammad Bashir Abdu Abdullahi. Yes. Then uh, Abdullahi Muhammad Ado and Amina. So for a few, so I give you attendance and uh, I'll send the reports to you. Well, um, stay vigilant for your, you know, on your Google Classroom. And so that my, probably I might send the question paper pattern as well, maybe next week. But stay vigilant and go through the notes and even the recording and try to, uh, whatever is not there in the, you know, in the notes, try to incorporate that, whatever we have discussed. Okay. So, okay. See you next class. Same time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank Welcome. you. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Bye.